What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we've got the Draeger ventilator again, but this time we're going to be talking about pressure control. And I want you to see what happens when we change compliance and resistance in pressure control. Let's dive in. All right, so we're back now and we're in pressure control this time. And we know we're in pressure control this time because when we look at our, our pressure waveform, we see that it is square. If you remember in the volume control video, the volume control waveforms aren't square in nature. So we know we're in pressure control and we're at starting at baseline. We have our one rubber band on our test lung. That's where we're starting from. We're going to call this baseline. So what I want to do here is do an inspiratory hold. And you see where that's exactly what happened. But notice how you didn't really get a drop in the pressure like you did in volume control. Now this is interesting because when you tell the ventilator to do an inspiratory pause, what you're telling the ventilator to do is that breath you just delivered, hold that breath a little longer. Well, when you do that in volume control, it holds the volume in the alveoli. So you see that change in pressure that we, we observe. But when you're in pressure control, you, you, you're not going, the ventilator says, okay, well, I'll hold what I'm told to do as long as you want me to. And what you're telling the ventilator to do is to hold that breath. Well, what is the ventilator doing? It's holding the set pressure that you have set, which we have 25 set. And we have an eye time of one second. So the ventilator says, okay, you want me to do an inspiratory hold? I'll just hold this pressure at 25, which is also going to be the peak inspiratory pressure. So we come over here and we see that our peak inspiratory pressure is indeed 25. And we come over here and we see that we get a slight drop, but not much. That's 23.7. Our plateau pressure is 24. Now, we need to look at our volumes here. What type of volume are we getting? We're getting 550 milliliters, okay? This was baseline. Now let's reduce the compliance of this lung by taking another rubber band like we did in the volume control video, which if you haven't watched that one, I highly encourage you to go check that one out as, as well. I'll link to it in the, um, in the link above. But you can see here I've added another rubber band. We now have two rubber bands, and this test lung is now less compliant than what it was when there was just one rubber band. This again is going to illustrate ARDS, a developing pneumonia, pulmonary fibrosis, anything that, that is associated with the reduction in alveolar compliance. Now, we do an inspiratory hold. Let it go. Let's freeze this. Let's go look and see what our plateau is. Our plateau is 24.2, 24.3. We're going to call it 24. And our peak inspiratory pressure is 25. Plateau is 24. Let's see what our volume is. Our peak volume here looks like it peaks out at about 243. Okay, so compliance has gone down. Pressure has remained the same, but we see we're getting a smaller tidal volume now. Okay, well, let's take both of these rubber bands off and let's see what happens when we see an improvement in compliance. So now you can see here where I have. I no longer have a rubber band on here. And so this is going to simulate an increase in compliance. And when we do an inspiratory hold, let it go, freeze the waveform, come back and look at it. Here's our plateau right here. This is reading 23.6, 23.8. We're going to call it 24. And our peak inspiratory pressure is right there at 25. So peak pressure is 25, plateau is 24. What's our peak volume delivered? Peak volume delivered was 580, okay? So we see where all of these are saying the same story. If you've noticed, if you've been paying attention, the only thing that's changing is the amount of volume that's being delivered. Now what I want to do, just like I did, in the volume control videos, I'm going to take this piece right here. I'm going to put it in line with my ventilator, and this is going to simulate an increase in airway resistance. So we'll do that. 
Try to do it without getting an alarm here. Got it done. Cool. Okay. So I have now put this airway resistance simulator in line. And we need to go back to baseline here. Okay. So I need to put my one blue rubber band back on here. Get this set back up the way so we know we're starting from exactly baseline. Okay. So I've got my baseline set back to where we started. And all of the difference is now is this airway resistance simulator. So when we look at this and we do an inspiratory, not that, do an inspiratory hold. Freeze this waveform. What we see here is that our plateau is coming in at around 20, 19.8. Our plateau is now 20. And when we look at our peak inspiratory pressure, it's coming in over here at 25. When we look at our volume, we are getting 260. Okay, so that's the effects that we see. Now, what's interesting is with this airway resistance, there is a drop in this pressure. I was not expecting that. I don't know if that's the test lung or what, because I was not expecting this to happen in consideration that we're holding the peak inspiratory pressure for the time. So we'll see if this continues to be a trend, maybe look further into this. Maybe there is a drop in pressure control with airway resistance. I don't know, but we'll talk about it and see what we, we find. Now, here's what I do notice. If you think back to the volume control video, there was a big drop from peak inspiratory pressure to plateau. We didn't get that big of a significant drop in this in this what we've just what was just illustrated right here we see a slight drop but not nearly as big as what we saw in volume control and i'm not surprised by that because in pressure control you're not going to allow that pressure to go as high as what we saw in volume control in the previous video so that's pressure control baseline decreased compliance increased compliance and increasing in area resistance let's go look at what the data shows and we'll talk about that Alrighty, so we've been looking at the ventilator and I've been writing numbers down and here's what those numbers look like. Now, when we look at this, we remember we're in pressure control here. Okay, so we're in pressure control and what we want to recognize is remember we started from a state of baseline, then we decreased compliance, then we increased compliance, and then we increased airway resistance. These were the numbers we got. Now, look at what happens here. Peak inspiratory pressure at baseline was 25. Plateau pressure was 24. Our tidal volume was 550. Now, what happened when we decreased compliance? Look, inventory pressure stayed at 25. Plateau stayed at 24. Tidal volume went down to 243. What does that tell you? In pressure control, if compliance decreases, then tidal volume decreases. But pressure stays the same. Why? Because pressure is set. Now then we took the rubber bands off of the test lung and we increased the compliance and look what happened. Pressure didn't change. PIP stayed at 25. Plateau stayed at 24. Look at our tidal volumes. They actually increased. They went up from baseline a little bit. Interesting, right? You have to understand what compliance does in pressure control. We're seeing that there's no change in our pressures, but there are changes in our volumes, and that's the definition of pressure control. Set pressure, varying volumes. Now we increase the airway resistance. We see that our peak inspiratory pressure stayed at 25. We did get a little dip in our plateau pressure, which we talked about was kind of odd. We'll be diving into that and seeing if I can figure and, and learn why, because I wasn't expecting that to happen. But look at our tidal volume way down we see here from pressure control and the volume control video we're seeing where airway resistance has a big effect on the variable so in pressure control your pressure is set but it had a major impact on our volumes that would that were delivered so we see where we got a small tidal volume compared to baseline where we were getting 550 they're basically cut in half okay so you recognize when you're in pressure control, compliance will affect your volumes. If your compliance goes down, your volumes go down. 
If your compliance improves, such as, as a, a person who has pneumonia and gets better, you will see your volumes start to increase. And with airway resistance, during a bronchospasm or, or, or excessive secretions or a patient biting on in the tracheal tube, you're going to get a reduction in your volumes. Now, the most important thing to understand about this is that all of these varying tidal volumes means that you have a varying minute volume. So your minute volume is now going to vary, which means your CO2 removal is going to vary. That's the importance of understanding the changes and the effects that compliance and resistance has during pressure control ventilation and then tying that back in to proper management of your arterial blood gases. All right, don't forget, you can check in the video description below, there is a link to this page right here. And I'm telling you about it because I want you to know that I have a course set up that is 100% free. All you have to do is go enroll in it. That's it. And you will have access to multiple different documents, cheat sheets. I'm going to even be putting videos up there in the near future. They're just going to be free content to aid you along your journey. Of course, if you're interested in help with your TMC, there's a TMC boot camp for purchase, as well as a basic interpretation for arterial blood gases that you can also find for purchase. That's pressure control related to compliance and resistance. This is where you can find me, Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, Twitter at Coach RRT, Respiratory Coach at gmail.com. If you need anything, don't hesitate to send me an email. Text me, 817-968-7035. I would love to have you in my texting community where I can just say hi. Hope you have a great day. Happy birthday. Hey, don't forget, in pressure control, an increase in airway resistance will cause a decrease in your expiratory volumes. Check your blood gas. Just stuff like that. Connecting us, encouraging you, exciting you to go out and be the very best respiratory therapist you can be. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.